Welcome back to Gun and Shot TV. This is Chris, and today we're going to be talking about some pistols that Ruger made. Um, just briefly to touch on, this is the Ruger Standard. This was the pistol that got Ruger started, essentially. Um, he was making hand drills at the time, and uh, was looking at a Luger and a Japanese Nambu pistol that he had brought back from World War II, and realized that his hand drill frame could be fitted with a piece of pipe and a barrel and a bolt and make a pistol. So these were really cheap. They were much cheaper than Colt or um, the high standards at the time and a pretty decent pistol. An interesting fact about them is the magazine is actually a high standard magazine that was adapted to work because he didn't actually have the ability to make magazines when he first started out. So I'm going to throw a few rounds down range. So this was a pretty decent pistol. It got Ruger his start. And, you know, if you ever see one of these cheap, I recommend grabbing it. But I'm not actually talking about this pistol. I was just giving you a little bit of info about how Ruger started. Because after Ruger produced the standard, um, he now had a functional gun company. And he was looking at other things to make, things that would be uh, a good fit for the market at the time. Well, during World War II, Colt had stopped production of the single action army. Um, I believe they scrapped the molds, uh, scrapped the original machining uh, during World War II. So there was no more single action armies um, and there was a big demand because there were westerns in the theater after the quiz show scandal kind of got rid of quiz shows. There were a lot of westerns on TV in the 50s and so there were actually two companies. There was uh, Great Western and Ruger decided to make single action army clones and what this is is it's a Ruger single six. Now this one's a little bit interesting because it is a late 50s production one and it's what's called a three screw and what that means is there's these three screws on the side and it has pretty much a direct copy of the Colt single action army system in which there's four little clicks when you pull it back there's no hammer block there's uh, not really very much in the way of safety um, the only real big difference from the Colt is there's there's some modern coil springs in there and there's a floating firing pin that's part of the frame here. So that comes into play. Um, these actually sold really well. They were cheap. They're very nice, well-made guns. This one's one I picked up cheap on Gun Broker. I think I paid, it was right around 200 bucks for it. And it actually is kind of strange in that it's been uh, plated. It's been, from what I can tell, nickel plated. And uh, Ruger didn't actually nickel plate these. There were supposedly some that were nickel plated for a trade show. Um, but uh, those, I think, were nickel plated on the frame as well. So this would have been either a custom plating job or maybe one of the, uh, one of the distributors or wholesalers back in the day plated a few. But this was the standard single six that came out. Um, as I said, um, it's a pretty much direct copy of the Colt. So to load it, you pull the hammer back two clicks and now you're at the half cock position you can open the loading gate and put in your rounds now when you put the hammer down it's actually pressing on the fire pin and so with the firing pin being pressed on like that if the gun were to get jarred it's gonna go off so most of your old cowboys would only load five and leave an empty cylinder under the firing pin and like I said, it's a direct copy, essentially, of the Colt system. And that's fine. You have to be a little bit smart about using it. There is a safety notch, which is right there. But on the safety notch, if you were to drop this gun and hit the hammer hard enough, it could snap the safety notch or snap the trigger, and you'd still end up setting the gun off. So let me load this up. We'll throw a few shots down range with it. So for safety, to load this gun, you want to go to half cock. You've got your empty cylinder. You're going to put one, load one, skip one. Don't put anything in there. And then you're going to load one, two, three, and four. Now I'm going to close the gate. I'm going to pull the hammer all the way back, and I'm going to let it go all the way forward. Now it should be resting on an empty cylinder. Now you can carry it like this, it's safe to carry. It's not going to go off if you drop it. 
you know, like I said, you theoretically could load six rounds, pull the hammer all the way back, and it's live now. So, I'm, you know, this is this is as dangerous as you're going to get here. You could theoretically gently pull the pull the trigger and let the hammer go forward and end up on the half cock or the safety notch and theoretically you could carry it but if you drop it it could go off so like I said now I'm resting over an open or loaded cylinder so I'm gonna shoot it down range I, nothing to be nervous about the gun guns don't go off by themselves but it is a little bit unsafe compared to what we have modern ha with uh, with the uh, hammer blocks so I'm gonna shoot a few rounds down range And now to unload, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to half cock, and we're going to use the ejector rod to push all the empties out. And I like to go through and make sure that there's no rounds still in there, just for safety, because you can't really see. You can pull the cylinder out and on half cock. You press this little detent pin here, pull the... Uh, Cylinder rod out, and now your cylinder's out. You can inspect it, look it over. As you can see, this one was plated, but a lot of it wore off. When I got the gun, it was in a leather holster, but it was a metal line quick draw holster. And so it actually had like a stud that held the gun in the holster under tension so you could quick draw, and it was metal line so you could holster it again, and it was consistent draw. Well, it had scratched it up pretty good. I ended up finding a holster for it at a surplus store. Actually, before I got the gun, this is an old, very nicely tooled hunter, and I picked it up for, I think, I think the guy asked for 15 bucks for it. I told him I'd give him five, and he said deal, and uh, it actually fits it perfectly, and uh, it's a really decent holster for carrying. It's got the nice hunter system where you can unsnap it, put it on and off your belt quickly. Now, I have a different gun here, and this is a a similar Ruger single six, but this is actually a new model single six. And what happened is, is in the 70s, I believe early 70s, because I think the change happened in 73, Ruger got a lawsuit. And as settlement to that lawsuit, they said that uh, they would retrofit their old guns with a hammer block system or a transfer bar or a trigger bar. There's a couple different terms you use. Usually Ruger uses the term transfer bar. And let me show you what that is. If you look in the two guns, this one, you can just see the hammer and the firing pin. This one, there's actually a block that rides up between the two. And what that does is when I pull the trigger, I'm going to decock that one. When I pull the trigger, the trigger holds that block up and lets the hammer hit the firing pin. If I let go of the trigger, it drops down and the hammer doesn't hit the firing pin. So that was something that Ruger agreed to, I believe, in a lawsuit settlement. And they also started a campaign as part of that settlement to retrofit all their older guns. So what you'll sometimes find is you'll see one that has these three screws rather than the two pins. But when you look into it, it's got a transfer bar. And that means that someone sent it in. They're less desirable to collectors, but honestly, I think the transfer bar is a nice feature if you want to carry the gun or shoot it a lot. Let me show you how the transfer bar system works. So with the transfer bar system, you don't have that half cock notch. So to load the gun, you're going to open the side gate, and that frees the cylinder to spin. Now, remember, there's, there's no actual way for the hammer to hit the firing pin. So you can load all six rounds with the new transfer bar system on the new model single sixes. So I'm going to put all six rounds in. So now I just close the gate, and now the cylinder latches up, and I'm ready to fire. Now I can carry it like this. It's completely safe. It's not going to go off if I drop it, anything like that. Um, so, it, like I said, I, I actually prefer this system. It doesn't have quite the same trigger as the older style um, single sixes of the three screws, but it's still it's still fun to shoot. These are still great guns. I you know some people get all up in the collector value of the older system, and and it is nice, but they're not as good of a shooter safety wise, in my opinion. 
because these are great guns to train new shooters on and to go through basic safety and loading and unloading. And with it being single action, it's, it's a lot harder for somebody to double or to get carried away as long as they don't start fanning it like they've seen in a movie. So I'm going to shoot a few rounds with this guy. And now to unload, you're going to open the gate, same as the other one. And these are a little tricky because it doesn't actually index. You can get some aftermarket parts that I believe do the indexing on these and the Blackhawks. But honestly, it's not that big of a pain to just go through and line it up yourself. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to load them up, throw them a few more rounds down range, and uh, point at some targets here. So I've actually loaded six rounds. Um, it's perfectly safe as long as you... Keep the gun pointed somewhere safe and keep your finger off the trigger. I'm going to shoot a little bit easier target to hit. These sights are not uh, actually the best. So as you can see, pretty, pretty nice gun. So I've loaded up the uh, Joker gun, the 9.5 inch barrel. This one, I didn't actually go looking for a 9.5 inch barrel, but I saw it for, I believe it was 300 bucks with the extra cylinder and figured I couldn't really go wrong with that. It's got a little bit of wear on the painted surface on the ejector rod there, but it shoots very well. I've gone through and painted the front sight orange. So there you have it, some great guns by Ruger, um, single sixes. I think the old model and the new model are both great guns. You know, if you see the three screws, you know it's going to be an older model, unless it's had the conversion done. Um, both are, are fun to shoot. Um, like I said, great learners. And I really recommend looking for one if you ever find a good deal on one. You'll see them crop up. Like I said, I paid about 300 for the uh, nine and a half inch and this five inch I found on Gunbroker because it's a little bit dinged up and the finish isn't great. I paid like 200 bucks with the holster. So definitely, uh, definitely worth checking out. Definitely great old guns. For Gun and Shot TV, this is Chris saying thanks for watching and have a nice day.